This video explains how to apply the duplicated function in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In the first example of this tutorial, I will show you how to apply the duplicated function to a vector object. And for this, we first need to create an example vector, as you can see in line two of the code. So after running this line of code, a new vector object is appearing at the top right, which is called vec. And we can print this vector to the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that our vector contains five elements, which are the letters A, B, A, B, and C. So as you can see, the letters A and B are duplicated. And if we now apply the duplicated function to this vector, we can identify these duplicates. So we can do that, as you can see, in line five of the code. And in this line of code, I'm using the duplicated function. And within the function, I'm simply specifying the name of our vector object. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that a vector containing logical values is returned. And as you can see, the logical values indicate that the first two letters are no duplicates. However, the second occurrence of the letter A is considered as a duplicate and the second occurrence of the letter B is considered as a duplicate as well. We can now use this information to create a vector object that contains only unique values. And we can do that as you can see in line seven of the code. So in this line of code, I'm creating a subset of our input vector object VEC. I'm specifying square brackets to tell R that I want to create a subset of this vector. Then I'm using the bang operator in front of the duplicated function and I'm applying this function to our vector. And I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling VEC unique. So after running line seven of the code, this new data object called VEC unique is appearing at the top right and we can print the new vector to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line eight of the code. And then you can see that this new vector object contains only the unique values in our vector, so the letters A, B, and C. So in this first example, I have explained how to apply the duplicated function to a vector object. However, it's also possible to apply this function to a data frame, as I will show you in the next example, starting in line 10 of the code. And in lines 10 and 11 of the code, I'm creating an example data frame. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 12 of the code. And then you can see that our data frame contains seven rows and the two columns X1 and X2. So in the next step, we can apply the duplicated function to this data frame. And we can do that as you can see in line 14 of the code. So as in case of a vector object, we also only need to insert the data frame within the duplicated function. So after running this line of code, you can see that another vector is returned, which contains logical values. And as you can see, this vector contains the value true in the third and fourth positions. So this means that the third and fourth rows of our data frame are duplicates. So you can see that by having another look at our data set, as you can see, the third row is containing the same values as the first row and the fourth row is containing the same values as the second row. And for that reason, those two rows are considered as duplicates. Now, if we want to remove these duplicates from our data set, we can use the duplicated function as you can see in line 16 of the code. So once again, I'm using square brackets and the bang operator to extract only the unique rows from our data. And I'm storing the output of this in another data frame that I'm calling data unique. So after running line 16 of the code, this data frame is created at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 17 of the code. And now you can see that our new data frame contains only five rows and the third and fourth rows have been removed. Now, as you can see, this code in line 16 has removed the 
last duplicates of our data. However, it's also possible to keep the last duplicates and remove the first duplicates from our data set. And we can do that, as you can see, in lines 19 and 20 of the code by specifying the from last argument to be equal to true. So if you run these lines of code, another data frame called data unique last is appearing at the top right. And if we print this data frame to the RStudio console, you can see that this time we have removed the first and the second rows of our data set, but we have kept the third and fourth rows. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.